Hello, welcome again to the boy, to the, the the hobo and girlfriend wrestling show. Oh, I forgot to do that. That's pretty bad. I must have hit something weird. Yes, I'm here to talk about some Monday Night Raw, and also you can say goodbye to this stuff because I'm getting my haircut tomorrow. Because I had a pretty busy day today. Still working. I have about probably 39 minutes left. And I still have to talk about some Ron Process videos. So I still have, and I still have to hobo. Because also, yes! Made some money today. I cash in all my aluminum. Yes! Earned my $31. Now it's plenty of time to talk about Raw. Uh, so this was, uh, oh, also, um, on the group I'm on, um, Joel TJ, this air guitar goes out to you. And also because they were in the great state of Texas, or at least the state of Texas, Shun, this video goes out to you as well. Now let's get to it. So let's, like, let's talk about some Monday Night Raw. And this was kind of a weird show because the crowd was into it at some point, And then at some points they really checked out. And it was a really weird end. The first thing I'd like to say is that they actually did change the beginning of the show. It's all kind of now on like the wraparound old school film of matches from the, the past. So, yeah, they're doing something different. Um, but it starts off with Roman Reigns coming out, and then he and Shane talk a little bit. Um, Shane tells him what he's going to do to him, yada, yada, yada. At the Super Showdown on Friday, which I'll be getting into later because I'm going to give out a schedule of what I'm doing. Then Drew McIntyre says, I don't like Texas. Can't blame him. Um, I think I, did, I almost went to Texas once. I just didn't want to be... <laughs> In a car for 24 hours with my, well, now ex girlfriend, her parents, and grandmother. Especially when we had to get mother, a little mother's helper, to deal with her grandmother. 
and just for me to be there in the car and not drive it's um, not, not not happening folks yeah and, and and just to be stuck with them at their mercy for four days no 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 so but wait i digress let's go back to the wrestling matches um, so the revive. So of course, because Ro because Roman Reigns is any other wrestler, he gets distracted very easily. Revival jump him. Usos come running down. We have a new faction. We have the Bloodline. Makes sense. The Roman Reigns and the Usos are all related. So we have the Bloodline, which is Roman Reigns, Jimmy and Jay Uso, take on Drew McIntyre and the Revival. And I always get Scott Dawson and, and Dash Wilder confused. I think it's Dash Wilder. I always forget. I forget if I forget if this. No, that's Gene Wilder was author, I guess, or playwright, whatever they call him. This was a pretty good match. Um, it started off really strong. I mean, you had Sarah dives by the Usos, um, block super kick, and but this and not today. That was a good line. Love it when you can actually hear the rest talk to each other, and there was a. Ooh! So, yeah, which was always fun to hear. And I'll tell you what, Mike Rome did an amazing entrance for Shane McMahon. And the best thing about this is that when Roman came out, there was only about 10. Yes, you heard it, folks. 10 minutes between the promo, the kind of intro to the show, and the wrestling. So that was pretty good, too. At least I didn't go an hour without wrestling, although this show kind of felt like it, though. Because the matches, with the exception of probably two matches, not too good. So again, this match, again, it's your classic tag team match. You have the tag team isolation wrestling. They isolate, I think, Jimmy Uso a lot. Um, tell you what, that Scottish headbutt looked amazing. I think the crowd was getting pretty bored because they're like, they're chanting to Shane, change your outfit. And then, and then I know someone else in the chat, along with Joel TJ, said this is a new SSD, the Simone SWAT team. I like that. I remember who the SSD were. Uh, I think Roman took that headbutt either really hard or it was really hard delivered. I'll tell you what, that Scottish headbutt is is going to up uprise the Simone headbutt because Roman Reigns was kind of like out of it for the rest of the match and was like literally rubbing like one specific part in his head. Normally, when a wrestler hurts, they're like, oh my head. He's just like, oh. oh. Again, that was kind of weird. That was a stiff headbutt. Um, eventually, because of Shane McMahon's interference, which is what he's supposed to do, the revival and Drew McIntyre get the win and actually a pretty good cheeseburger match. Then we have a Miz TV segment with Seth Rollins. Uh, Miz plays up to Seth Rollins and Brock. Uh, he's not dancing when he comes out. He seems pretty upset that he got called out. It's like, I'm not going to do anything now. He used to go there. Then it was a Lucha House, house Party that was supposed to be a match. And then Lars Sullivan just comes out. Uh, Lucha House Party kind of beat him out of the ring. He just kind of stands up there, glares at him. I guess they're going to have a three-on-one handicap match at the Super Showdown. Check that one word. Ooh. Different. I like different words. So with that, after that segment, there was another segment. It's kind of funny. Between the I Iconics, who put on an amazing network YouTube thing, they go around kind of giving everyone their I iconics. Sure, Jinder Mahal fan to an amazing. Um, Umberto Carrera was there. He's like, he's like no, no mas, senor, no mas. He looked like he was actually in a hurry to go somewhere. Um, Sonya in the village just kind of bugged him. Who else was there? Oh, Bailey walked by in there. He's, he's like, didn't look at her, but, but kind of had their belts face her away. Oh, well. It was funny. The iconics are pretty funny. Oh, 
And um, Peyton Roy. Oh no, Billy Kay called Peyton Royce her wifey. Oh, yeah, you know what that breaks with Mr. Spears. Oh yeah, but um, they had a moment with Nikki Cross. Um. They called her a pound puppy. Said she looks sad, and Nikki Cross looks sad. I think they're trying to portray Nikki Cross as that pathetic female figure who needs a friend. Not really the way they should be portraying her, because then she goes all psycho. She goes semi psycho in the ring. So I don't know if it's that like whole bipolar thing that they wanted to do with AJ Lee. Nikki Cross is getting on TV though, and she's happily married to Big Demo. So you have to wish her the best and everything. Um, eventually, Alexa Bliss does come out and says, "Don't the two, of, don't the two of you talking to the Iconics? Don't you two of you need a blooming onion?" <laughs> there were some great one lines. Either they figured out the writing for people, or they've allowed them to do their own writing for the most part. Or they've just said, say something bad about Australia. Say something joking about Australia. And probably the thing that she can go with, aren't you two supposed to go to Bloom and Onion? Of course, an Outback specialty. Um, and then, so do we have Face Alexa? And then she actually takes, offers Nikki Cross a coffee. Says, no, I'll get you a coffee this time. Nikki's like, yeah, I'll get coffee. Nikki doesn't need coffee. Nikki's had too much coffee. And then Becky Lynch comes out for a promo. Uh, just, just saying, again, how she won her belts and how, how she beats up people. Kind of standard Becky stuff. And then with that, Lacey Evans comes out. Then goes her standard promo. Charlotte Flair comes out, all dressed out. And both Lacey... And Charlotte are in the ring gear. So you know there's going to be a match happening. I don't think I want to turn that off. See, see my notes and actually stare at the camera at the same time. So I have plenty of time. I start to do something. Um, uh, Lacey Evans. I don't know. It's not doing it for me. Her promos aren't that smooth. That's a terrible southern accent. Charlotte Flair comes out. And of course, this leads to the match. Um, Charlotte versus Lacey Evans. This starts out really as a brawl. A whole bunch of the cuffs. The highlight of, the, of this match is that it looks like Charlotte Flair gave Lacey Evans, an, Lacey Evans a wedgie. And, I mean, the whole crowd was dead through most of it. It was... It was bad. Um, I mean, just really botchy. It seems semi shoot for a moment because Charlotte seems to like no sell whatever Lacey Evans did to her. Granted, it is Charlotte Flair, but still, I mean, the crowd was just not into it. I think the crowd was talking more to Becky, and Becky was talking more to the crowd. I almost want to say one of the cameramen or ring technician said, okay, Becky, get in there. This, the, the crowd hates this. So go in there. Because eventually, the only, I mean, besides the wedgie that, that, that Charlotte gave Lacey Evans, which is kind of funny, <laughs> she, she pulled those already riding high shorts up a little higher. <laughs> she had to pull them down when she came out to the outside of the ring. Is that Becky got involved, and and I'm I'm sure someone said something to Becky. Go stop that! It was bad because it really did get botchy. And the, those two women, Charlotte's normally a pretty good worker. Lacey Evans, I've always been so so on, and her stock's not rising. And then, then the whole crowd chanting, "Thank you, Becky! Thank you, Becky!" So Becky. Well, I don't know. She's losing her worthiness, though. Rey Mysterio comes out. He surrenders the belt to Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe is still best, Joe. And, um... 
what was it that Ray Mysterio said? I mean, he got a partial reaction. I think I switched on. I think I was looking at something else. But it was... Oh, it was in Spanish. That's why. Ah, because... Oh, because you could hear half the audience go, Whoa! You could hear them literally go, Whoa! Okay? And, and I don't know. It was in Spanish, though. So I wonder what he really did say. And, of course, he surrendered the belts of Samoa Joe. And now those belts have Velcro? Because you could actually hear the Velcro come off? And I don't know. I'm... Old, I like belts with just the original snaps. I know there are reasons why they have the Velcro. They're easier to get on and off, especially for like things like ladder matches and stuff like we saw in NXT. But to me, there is still some charm about not Velcroing, but actually using the snaps on the belt. That just might be my thing, though, folks. Then we had an arm wrestling match between... Oh, and um, oh, just to say this, that a Charlotte Lacey Evans match was soup. Actually, you know what? Post. That was at the 9 o'clock hour, and I'm like, wait a second. They're doing one match an hour. And they're not 40-minute matches. So there's a lot of filler in between matches, which is not good. Then Braun Strowman came out. Uh, he challenged guys Bobby Lashley to an arm wrestling contest. Um, Lashley started off just by slapping Braun in the face. Eventually, Lashley does a lot of antics. Um, he does actually... Braun Strowman actually wins the arm wrestling match. Toast? At least they're doing something with these two. And it's building up to the Super Showdown. Because then, after the match, Lashley tosses the table around. He power slams Braun Strowman. That's good. So we'll get the math, and I'll get into that later. Then there was the Ginger Hall, Hall versus R-Truth WWE video um, on a golf course. That was kind of funny. You know what? Only because I was entertained. The fact that Ginger Hall punched R-Truth on a golf course, rolled him up, had the wherewithal to have a referee there win the 24-7 belt on a golf course. That's a can of soup. But then our truth came to his senses as Jinder Mahal was celebrating again on said golf course in his wrestling gear. Which I'm sure the greenskeeper I had a chuckle at that. Like, huh? Um, our truth rolled up in the Mahal because he was celebrating too much. He won the belt back. It was fun and good. Started to get away. Another key in a suit match. So, it was, at least this match was funny. It made me chuckle. On, well, besides the wedgie moment and the Charlotte and Lacey Evans match. Um, then Carmella's looking for our truth in the stadium. Uh, Drake Maverick is looking for our truth with his wanted posters. EC3 is just carrying around a solo cup. Looking like, why am I here? And they they're they're just bearing EC3. I don't know what they're doing. Unless they have something tremendous in mind, and they're just keeping everything to themselves. I have no idea. Then we have oh the next match. We have Nikki Cross versus Peyton Royce, and this match was actually kind of fun. You in on one corner you had Alexa Bliss. 
and again in Nikki's corner, and then you had Pate, you had Billy Kay and Peyton Royce's corner. And I mean, for the most part, the match was kind of fun. Um, it was definitely better than the Charlotte Lacey Evans match. It's it still seemed it didn't seem smooth. It it, it wasn't botchy. Except for like one move. But it just doesn't it just didn't feel smooth though. It seemed really forced. Um I did like that semi tarantula lock by, by Peyton Royce. That's pretty cool. And Nikki looks like she busted her lip or her gums or had a tooth lodge out because I thought her lips looked extra red. And then when you see like that weird Orangey red color on her teeth. You're like, ooh, she she did something. Bleed, Nikki, bleed, bleed, Nikki, bleed, bleed, Nikki, bleed. We used to do that a lot. Actually, that used to be um Sarah Logan's thing when she was. Oh, um, I know. I can. Crazy Mary Dobson. That's it. Yeah. I wonder if the WWE would ever let the women juice if it was right. And if it wasn't like a true freak accident. You know, because again, Becky, because Becky Lynch, the, like, this is still an iconic image of her having like a whole red eye and whole red face. Again, Candice LeRae's Crimson Mask was, um, it was amazing. Normal. I don't know. It just would add something. It would just give it dimension. Give it, give it. I don't know that that real feel to it. I guess I don't know. I do not want to see in any situation an Eddie Guerrero blood pouring art out of an artery situation, though. That's too much. Maybe just a little bit of the juice. Again, if it was in like a steel cage match or a hell of a cell match or an extreme rules match, just a little, I think, would be okay. Again, I don't want to see like, I don't want to see any Dustin Ask or I don't want to see a, a Rick Flair crimson face and crimson hair situation. But. But they don't do chair shots of the head anymore. They don't do any shots of the head anymore. Wow, that's true. I just realized that. And I, uh, I don't know. If it was woman on woman violence, would a shoot elbow like the Brock Lesnar Randy Orton elbow? Would that be okay though? I don't know. Well, we'll see. I don't know what I don't know what the censors say about that because for some reason they're allowing cursing on TNT and 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 FX. It's kind of cool because I saw Deadpool. I heard that one one four letter word. I'm like, what? Are they allowed to say that now on TV? I mean, this is YouTube. You can almost say say and do whatever you feel like doing. But that I mean, I can scratch my ear and. The nth degree, but I think within the first eight seconds you can't say the f word. But after that, you're like, you're like blankety blank 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 blank. So um, again, with this, um, I, I don't know if you bit her lip. Uh, it was uh, pretty good. Um, the crowd did really did get quiet though. Then of course uh, the coffee came out for Alexa Bliss. And once you realize Alexa, Alexa Bliss was wearing white jeans and someone brought her out a cup of coffee, you knew something was going to happen. So then Billy Kay came over. She distracted Nikki. Alexa tried to get in her face. Billy Kay said, oh, you got your coffee. Knocked the coffee out of her hand and knocked Alexa Bliss, who was wearing the white pants, into said kind of brown coffee because it wasn't the black coffee because it obviously had cream and sugar in it. So it just kind of looked like... like in the white pants, it honestly just looked like as, as if Alexa like Peter pants. 
So, uh, Nikki Cross did get the win. Again, that's neckbreaker. Still a great finisher. I, I remember when they had, they wrote Le Lacey Evans off because N Nikki Cross hit 10. I think it was like either 7 or 10. It was a lot of them, though, of those swing neckbreakers on Lacey Evans. And Lacey Evans was gone for a while. I told Lacey Evans to learn how to wrestle. <laughs> Um, again, the crowd just looked dead. I mean, you can see people on their cell phones, like like three to six rows deep. They just weren't into it, though. Um, Alexa seemed to get pissed off. Got her frustration on Billy Kay and Peyton Royce in the ring. And listen, Nikki Cross doesn't need caffeine because she had two cups of coffee. So she gave Nikki Cross her, her I guess, her other cup, her other cup of coffee. She does not need coffee. And she's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the old Nikki Cross is back. But Nikki Cross still leaves. She had, her, her music and entrance is different. She needs more strobe light. That's just the whole Nikki Cross character, I think. Nikki Cross needs strobe lights to make her feel even creepier. And again, just her laughing was amazing. She had one of the best entrances in NXT. And I think it's another case of the WWE said, this is a little too much. We don't want to make you look great, but that's yeah, so much for that. Then Brock Lesnar comes out. Um, Seth Rollins comes out. He's like, I'm sick of this. Brock, get out here. Brock comes out there with referee in tow. Paul Heyman's carrying the briefcase. Brock just gets in the ring, kicks Seth Rollins right in the nose. Right down there, folks. Yes, kicks Seth Rollins right in the nuts. Seth doubles over, starts crying like a little girl, grabs a chair, beats Seth mercilessly with a chair, throws him outside, F5s him on the outside, throws him back inside, couple German suplexes for good measure, and Paul Heyman's like, cash this in now. Oh yeah, because Seth got, um, uh, he called out Baron Corbin, Baron Corbin beating him up. So that, that prompted Brock to show up to the ring. Brock and Brock's like, no, Friday. And and poor Paul's just, oh, um, I'm sorry. I, I've been bad at this. I'm just tired, I guess. But the Nikki Cross versus Peyton Royce match, eh, it was a ham sandwich. No, back to where I was um, with Brock's tease of a cash. And he's like, no, I'm cashing in Friday. So that's going to happen. Probably he's probably going to sit there. I hope he actually sits in a couch. Like they have like, they just pull a couch out. He, he and, Bro he and uh, Paul Heyman just sit on a couch. Watch the Baron Corbin, Seth Rollins match. After the match, he just goes down there. Kicks him in the nuts again. Catches on on Seth. That's how Seth won. That is called hubris, Seth Rollins. You need to learn some. Some humility. Yes. And again, after that, he goes back in the ring. German suit, or just gives Seth a couple more shots. Uh, Seth's back is a mess because he started to bleed. Um, it was either something sharp from the chair, or he like popped a pimple or something on his back. It wasn't gushing out. It was just kind of plain stuff. And it's a good setup for, for Friday, I guess. And then he goes back to, to playing his, his boom box. And then he was being happy Brock. He's like, I got to beat up someone. That's all I needed. Um, <laughs> the, the crowd was also chanting one more time. They just wanted to see him get beat up. Um, in the back, they do put Seth Rollins on a stretcher, the neck brace and everything. Uh, put him in the ambulance. Becky Lynch gets in the ambulance with him. Oh. And you can tell that they weren't ready for it. And that this was like, okay, well, we'll put him in a dark ambulance. Because then it wasn't until, like, the EMT got in when they turned the lights on. And then you could, like, almost see Seth unstrapping himself in the ambulance. Because, like, they started to pull away and you could see, like, arms, like, pulling stuff. So, and it was pulling stuff, not, not, and it was front, like the EMT was just like sitting there. 
Becky Lynch was just sitting there, and, and Seth is like, get me out of this nonsense. So that was just kind of cute, I guess, the fact that Becky Lynch was there inside of it. And then we had Firefly Funhouse. Oh my god. This was the best part of the show. Of course, it starts with um, Bray Wyatt. He, uh, he says, time for some exercise. Then all of a sudden you see him transform into Jim Guy. This gym guy wears the tank top, the Zubaz pants, the uh, um, reverse fanny pack. I'll give him this much. Why why it got cut. And then there was a new character, or two new characters. One was Huskus the pig, who just, who just was stuffing his face with chocolate. And of course... That's in reference to him as Husky Harris back in NXT. <laughs> but the best. Demon Vince. You know what happens if you're going to eat all that chocolate and get fat? You're fired. <laughs> it was a Vince puppet with the devil horns coming out of his head. Not being subtle whatsoever. I mean, it went through the whole evolution of Bray Wyatt from Husky Harris, um, how he was, how Husky Harris was the eater of worlds, and then he had to exercise and clear his mind because it was like healthy body, healthy mind, mumbo jumbo thing. It was just funny though. Again, Demon Vince might be best Vince. Oh, that, that I was rolling over and I'm like, wow, this is really good now. So with that being said, it kind of the show is winding down. There was a Hunter Hearst Helmsley and Randy Orton segment, and this, folks, was no way scripted. They do so much better when there's either no script bullet points, or the wrestlers write the script themselves. Bray Wyatt wrote that script, folks. I don't care what anyone says. Bray Wyatt did that. Triple H and Randy Orton, they, 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 they said, we're, we're going in there with a mic. Don't worry. Who? Don't worry, Dad. <laughs> so Triple H and Randy Orton, um, Triple H used the word physicality. This is funny. Randy Orton, <laughs> At the line of the night about getting your balls from Stephanie's purse. Oh, oh, crowd went like, what did he say? <laughs> even Triple, even Paul of that. He's like, that was a good line. You could tell he was just, he was on the verge of just cracking up. And then he said, well, mine are so big, I have to leave a little everywhere. But then at least, what, Randy Orton, you need to find a you never had any. And Randy Orton, he's like, oh, he, he just put his head down. You can see his like, that's the best line ever. He's like, I'll see you Friday. <laughs> and Triple H threw the mic at him. So you bastard, you made me laugh. It reminds me of the time I made a friend of mine and roommate laugh in the middle of class. Because we were in a, a Spanish native speaker course. And he was sitting across from me. The native speaker was kind of next to one of the other two girls. And there were two girls there. And... Uh, you know there's someone in class who always, who's always that know-it-all? And, and, and this time, I was the guy who's not the know-it-all. I was the guy, and I'm like, okay. I just, I'm here because I have to be here. 
my my roommate was sitting, was sitting like across from me. And he's just like, he had the, he had the same look I did. It's like, God, this too. But I said, man, um, yeah, man, yeah, Dan. I know a bunch of people named Dan. I said, hey, Dan, wishing to those two girls. And he burst, he's like, <laughs> <laughs> really quick laugh. And the Spanish teacher asked him if he was okay. That was funny. I had a terrible time learning Spanish. I learned the hard way, very quick story. I probably told this a thousand times. I learned from three different people. One professor was from Barcelona. He was, he was a, true, uh, a true Spaniard from España. My other teacher, um, Dr. Mendez Faith, was from Paraguay? I think it was, I think it was Paraguay. Either Paraguay or Uruguay. One of those South American countries. Then my native speaker was from Puerto Rico. Be between the three of them, I could never pronounce anything right. Only because I was saying my bees like bees for the one person. I was saying my V's like bees for the other person. I had some, some god-awful accent that I used in front of my native speaker. I think I got everything confused from her. She's like, why, why, why do you switch your B's and V's? Because I'm just confused. I can... What is it? Valderrama is actually Valderrama. But then Barcelona is still Barcelona. Except for in Uruguay, it's like Barcelona. It's just a when you learn from three different people in three different dialects, it's awful. Um, but this so that was funny though. Then this led to the main event of the evening, and this was actually a really fun match. It was Ricochet versus Cesaro for the third time. Let me check on something. And I'll tell you what, they cannot put on a bad show, I think. Am I at oh, 9.95? Five more minutes, I think. I mean, honestly, this was an amazing match. I mean, it was short. That was my only complaint about it. I think it came on with like 15 minutes left, and you know, The Undertaker was going to show up. Um, this match should have been longer, though. So it was Ricochet and Cesaro. I mean, it's this flippy flip Ricochet who's truly amazing. But Cesaro's too strong. And he can actually catch him when he does the flippy stuff. I mean, he does all those spots. I mean, flips off his shoulders, slips from the slingshots himself from the outside in, onto Ricochet, onto Cesaro, flips off his back somehow. I mean, dodges things by flipping. And it's just so flippy. Um, there was the one. There was a barricade spot where I thought he, he, he really twisted as he caught his ankle. Because cause he didn't touch that ankle, and he's like, uh oh. And I'm like, oh, no. But, he, again, he did that flippy moonsault. Again, styles make fights, and this is a person. This is um, a very agile person, an amazing agile flippy, flippy high flyer versus a really strong person versus a really um, powerful person. Again, that deadlifts. Perplex from the outside over the ropes into the ring by Cesaro onto Ricochet was wow. Um, the thing is, is that even Cesaro kind of smiled. He's like, you know, I, Cesaro seems to be having fun because they're allowing him to wrestle the way he's allowed to wrestle, and he works so well with Ricochet. They have really, they have amazing chemistry in the ring. I can see probably about ten more of these matches before I get bored of them because all of them I think have been surf and turf matches. Uh, Cesaro, of course, said, um, never say never. It was a semi botchy end. It, it just didn't seem as smooth. I think it's because the rest like, okay, you have to wind this up now. So he kind of couldn't do all the flips and tumbles that he wanted, which I'm fine with that. Um, he eventually did He he did roll up Cesaro. Um, Ricochet got the win in a really fun, amazing surf and turf match. And then Cesaro was just furious. 
So he just started to, to, to beat up Ricochet. He went to the outside. He teased the table, or he teased the ladder. And as soon as he brought that ladder out, the crowd saw that and said, We want ladders! And then, you no, know, he wasn't going to placate to the crowd. He pulled a table. And lying on top of the table was our truth. And then um, Ricochet, like Cesaro pulled up the table, saw him. He's like, oh, "What are you doing here?" And and our truth is having a blast. He's like, "Ah, put me back." And uh, that gave Ricochet enough time to recover a little bit. Hit a uh, flippy moonsault onto Cesaro, and then once people saw, once our truth got in the ring. The whole loser's locker room emptied out, chased him around the ring a little bit. Um, Drake Maverick teased the pin, um, um, teased the match with him until Carmella kicked him. Carmella pulled out our truth of the match. Um, they were kind of running. You could tell Cedric Alexander like took out everyone. Cedric Alexander literally had to slow down because <laughs> he, he or, or you could tell he's like, okay, I have to slow down and just kind of reach for our truth. A cat playing with a toy or something. It was funny. So let me go check this again. But with that, I mean, that was just fun. Then the under Undertaker came out, and I think the USA Network actually cut off the Undertaker, which I'm kind of not happy with. And for the most part, he's like, "When you feel that cold, that's all. if you don't bring your best." You are gold. Is going to rest in peace. I mean, it was it was okay. There's some done that. Actually, log out. Cool. And actually, close that and give my computer a break. Write down my time over here. Ten point two. Oh yeah, it's only eleven fifty-seven too. Stop that. So that's good. Got my 10 hours working. Plus 30 bucks of bonus pay. That's always good. I just want to know when they're going to let Undertaker himself rest in peace. What are you cheese for? And that was Monday Night Raw. Um, Parts of it felt long. Parts of it were really good. Um, just some programming notes. On Tuesday is going to be my normal SmackDown show. Oh, don't go off there. Tuesday is my normal SmackDown show. Probably sometime Wednesday night. I'm going to put together my predictions for both. And I'm going to see. I'm going to make predictions at least. For Super Showdown on Friday and Dominion on Sunday, depending if I have work or not. And then, so Friday's going to be a double live stream day. So I actually do have to prep that stuff. And I need an intro for Impact Wrestling. So Fridays, I'm probably going to be watching wrestling Larry from, wow, 10 hours? I have to get to the gym semi-early then. Because so I'll be watching from 2 o'clock until whenever that show's over. It's not going to be 8 hours. Jeez, I hope not. And then Impact. From 10 to 12. I think I'm going to do a live stream. Mainly because I think one person said I did a really good impact show. Wow. The fact that I do anything good is kind of amazing. And then. Sunday. If I'm not working. Sunday. Or Monday. Probably do a live stream. About Dominion. For New Japan Pro Wrestling. And it kind of depends a little bit on my work schedule. And the time frame's always a little goofy and weird. So that's the way things are going to go for this week. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. And have a good, probably day, morning, night, evening, by the time this gets up. Bye.